Code review can be absolutely terrifying, especially as a new developer or as an intern. This is the process that pretty much every tech company does, where whenever you write some code, another developer on the team has to approve that code before it can be checked into the code base. But there are some unspoken rules of code review that if you follow them, your code reviews are going to go much smoother and the whole process will be way less stressful. First, and probably the most important component to a good pull request, and a pull request simply being the code being put up for review, and that's going to be to provide a good amount of context. And this is going to come in two main pieces. So first of all, your context needs to have a summary. So what exactly is it that this code is supposed to do? I shouldn't have to look at the code to figure out what it does. I should see a summary and quickly understand what it's supposed to do, and then look at the code to be able to understand does this code do what you are saying it's doing? That's part of the review process. And then second, you should also include a test plan. How did you prove to yourself that this code is correct? This could be unit tests, this could be a video if it's a UI change to show it actually working, but you should just include some information as to how we know that this code is correct. And finally, you might also want to include some why information. Why are we writing this code? What is the purpose of this code? This could be a task or an issue or something completely different, but just explain what is the purpose of checking this into the code base? Why do we need this to begin with? Second, and this is something that I made a mistake of a lot when I was first starting, and that's putting too much code in one pull request. It's way easier to review two 100 line pull requests than one 200 line pull request. And that scales way worse if you have like a thousand line pull request, I would much rather review maybe five 200 line pull requests. And a good rule of thumb here is if you have a commit message with the word and in it, well, then it could probably be broken up. If it's this and that, well, then this should be a pull request and that should be a pull request. We don't need to be combining the entire feature into one pull request. Just break it up into smaller chunks so that it's easier to review and we can review one thing at a time. The next principle of a good pull request is going to seem to go against the idea of breaking pull requests up into smaller units, and that's to not go too small. Now, this doesn't mean you can't just submit one line at a time. You can do that if that's all you need to do, but it should be standalone code. You should not be breaking code up so much so that if that code was to go into production, it's going to actually cause some outage. You should be assuming that any pull request you make could be pushed into production without any other future code in front of it. So every pull request should stand on its own in the sense of it doesn't break anything. It doesn't need to be a complete feature or anything like that, but it just shouldn't break anything and you should be assuming it could go into production. Do you ever look at a code base and see some to-do comment, look at the git history, and it's been there for like five or 10 years? I've seen this a ton, and this is going to be one of the key principles to a good pull request. And that's going to be if you have any to-do comments or future things that you need to do, make sure to have those tracked in a task or an issue or whatever it might be, just to make sure that you or somebody eventually actually gets it done and hold yourself accountable for that. Otherwise, your to-do comment is just your way of being lazy and saying things you're not going to do. Another key component to a good pull request is to follow the conventions of the code around whatever code you are writing. Now, this can differ at different companies, but sometimes what ends up happening is that different teams own different parts of the code base, and these different teams have slightly different conventions. Sometimes there's even different conventions within the team in different files. This isn't great, I wish everybody would just be consistent, but when this is the case, what you should be doing is following the conventions of whatever code is closest to the code you're writing. So that could be code in the same file, in the same section of the code base, whatever it is, just try to follow the conventions and be consistent. Another way you can make the code review process much smoother is to think about edge cases ahead of time. So think about the null case and the zero case and make sure you solve for these. And if you do anything that's a little bit complex to solve for these, then make sure to include that in your summary or your test plan with your pull request so that I as a reviewer can quickly come in and see that you've solved for these edge cases. And I don't have to try to follow the code path for every single edge case in my head, which is going to take a lot of extra time if I don't just have a quick explanation from you of how it actually works. One way that I minimize how many comments I get in code review and I just make my code get through review much quicker is I pre-review my code. So what I mean by this is before I hit that create pull request button, I'm just going to look through all of the code usually on GitHub or wherever I'm doing the code review, sort of act like a code reviewer and make sure I can explain what every single line of code is doing, make sure that nothing snuck in that should have been in a different pull request 
or that I can't break this up into multiple pull requests, do all of the things that I would do as a code reviewer, but looking at my own code. And because of this, I usually catch most of the mistakes that a code reviewer would have caught for me. And this saves a bunch of time because they don't have to write comments and we don't have to go back and forth to fix them. And it's just correct from the get go. Another key way to make your code easier to review is to avoid breaking good coding conventions and avoid code smells. If you want to see an entire breakdown of what good and bad code looks like, check out this video next.